All of the RetroTINK devices currently sold have the ability to update their firmware simply by connecting it to a PC. It's a pretty easy process that only takes a minute or two, but like with most things, might be confusing the first time you try it. This video is just going to be a quick walkthrough of how it works and what to expect when updating the firmware on your RetroTINK products. The first thing you need to know is which of the RetroTINKs are compatible with updating over USB. The RetroTINK Mini, 2X Pro, 2X SCART, 2X Multi-Format, and the brand new RetroTINK 5X are all able to have their firmware updated through the USB port. Unfortunately, the original RetroTINK 2X, as well as the RAD 2X cables and the transcoders, can't be used or upgraded. There's pretty much zero reason to update the transcoders or RAD 2X, and the original RetroTINK 2X is both out of production and no longer adding any firmware updates, so you're not missing much there. Next, we need to get the software set up in order to actually run the firmware update, but I definitely want to let everybody know that I'm going to go slowly and step by step just to make sure the instructions are clear, but this will go a lot faster when you're doing it yourself and really is much easier than it seems. First, start by downloading the correct drivers and update software. The links to both are in the description. Next, unzip and install the drivers first. After that's completed, install the software. That's pretty much it for preparation, and you'll never need to do this again. Once it's installed, from now on, you'll just need to double-click the icon to launch the update software. Now that the software is configured, download the firmware to match your device. Make sure to download the file that's labeled for your exact device. We'll start with the Tink Mini here. After the firmware is downloaded, plug the USB port in while holding down the button on the Tink Mini, and keep the button held down for a few seconds after powering it on. If you did it right, the LED should remain red after a few seconds, even after letting go of the button. As a note, some people find it easier to plug the PC side of the USB cable in while holding the button. There's no right answer, but I get why you'd want to reduce the amount of inserts into the micro USB port versus the much more durable USB-A jack. Anyway, if you see any other color besides red, it's in normal mode. You'd need to unplug and try it again. Once you've released the button and confirmed the red LED is still on, open the software you just installed. Hit search on the button up top and you should see FT232R USB UART appear in the box. Now hit load hex and point to the firmware update file that you downloaded before. Then hit flash to start updating. This should take less than a minute on all tinks except the 5X. Also, don't worry if the screen freezes, just let it do its thing and it should be all finished pretty quickly. When it's done, you'll get a completed notification. If something happens during flashing, you should be able to just repeat the process and reflash again. Overall, it was pretty easy, right? There's no fumbling with external programmers or messing with custom JTAG wires. Just plug it into your computer, load some software, and you're done. Okay, let's check out the small installation differences on the other RetroTank devices. And once again, please make sure that you download the correct firmware for the device that you're using. Do not load up the wrong firmware on the wrong model RetroTank. The 2X SCART is pretty much the exact same process as the Mini. Hold down the only button and make sure the LED stays red after releasing. If you see other colored lights, you have to unplug and start over. The 2X Pro is similar, but there's two buttons on the back. Make sure to hold the input button, which is the one closest to the HDMI port. Then plug in the USB cable. Like the others, if the LED is red after releasing the button, you did it right. Same with the 2X Multi-Format. Make sure to hold the input button, which is the one closest to the HDMI port. The RetroTINK 5X is mostly the same, Although instead of holding the input button, you need to hold the menu button, which is the one closest to the middle. Also, sometimes it takes me a few tries to get this right on the 5X, as it's easy to double press the button or press again as you're releasing. 
Here's where plugging in the USB-A connector into the PC might make things easier. Just keep trying and you'll get it though. Updating the RetroTank 5X is the same as the others, except it'll take a lot longer to update. I even called Mike the first time I updated while beta testing, because I thought I may have bricked the unit. Nope, it just takes a few minutes. If you're impatient like I am, just get it started, go do something else, and come back later. And as a note, there's nothing wrong with the 5X's update process. There's just so much more information in that code compared to the other model retro tanks. Well, like I said at the beginning, I wanted to go over each step slowly just to make sure the instructions were clear, but overall this is a really fast process. Load up some software, download the correct firmware for your retro tank, hold down a button while plugging it in, load some firmware, wait, and you're done. The only other thing to note is to keep an eye on RetroRGB.com as we post whenever there's a new RetroTINK firmware update and we usually demo the new features available as well. Mike's done a great job supporting these products long after they were sold and all firmware updates are completely free. Pretty awesome, right? Well, that's it for this time. If you'd like more videos like this one, please consider supporting this channel in any way, as it's your support that's keeping this channel, the website, and the weekly podcast alive. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.